Hi, and welcome to this newest video. My name is Johan, and in the following three videos, I'm gonna talk about end-to-end -end VDI solutions based on Intel's newest uh, CPU, GPU, and endpoint architecture. Um, so what I'm gonna do in this first video is basically talk about the GPUs that Intel recently announced, um, how we can utilize them uh, inside the virtual desktop, and also how we can assign them to that virtual desktop. So what I drew here uh, is the Intel Flex and Max based CPU architecture. So in this case, what you see is the uh, high over uh, layout, the high level layout of a Flex, an Intel Flex 140 GPU to be uh, specific. It consists out of basically two GPUs on a single card. Uh, and those GPUs are, um, consist, they consist out of cores and RAM. So there's a large number of cores, different types of cores, so general purpose computational cores, but also ray tracing cores. Uh, there's DDR6 RAM, um, and like I mentioned, there are two GPUs on a single card. Next to that, the card uh, has different types of or, or different encoders. In this case, four different encoder chips, and those encoder chips are capable of encoding video streams uh, in real time. Uh, the card is built for large uh, media encoding solutions, but as a um, uh, byproduct, if you will, they're great for offloading VDI uh, encoding and VDI rendering as well, since they're highly capable of doing that. Um, right, so I mentioned two different um, GPUs. Both GPUs are equipped with six gigs of frame buffer. So six here and six there. Right, so um, in order to utilize such a GPU, you need APIs and codecs. So uh, the GPU is capable of utilizing different types of APIs and different types of codecs. So let's talk about the APIs we commonly known uh, first. So those are the graphical APIs. And the ones we um, commonly known from, for instance, the gaming industry are OpenGL, OpenGL and DirectX. DirectX. And, um, another one that's, that's commonly known is Falcon. Uh, Falcon is also a uh, low latency uh, graphical API used for specific types of games. Um, and another one that's uh, specifically tied to uh, Intel's GPU architecture or I Intel's Acceleration architecture, if you will, is one API. So it's a single API used for different purposes. And I'll come to that um, in, the, in the next section. So next to those graphical APIs, we also have computational APIs. Um, the most commonly known is CUDA, which is developed by uh, NVIDIA. Um, next to that, we have OpenCL and Again, one API. Um, utilizing like these APIs uh, will, will give you the possibility to run computational workloads on the GPUs. Now in the last bit, uh, and this is um, quite often seen as a, well, it's, it's a misconception that GPUs only do uh, offloading of rendering. Well, GPUs can offload um, codecs and um, encoding of uh, visual streams as well, and really well, to be fairly honest. So uh, when looking at the, uh, the Intel Flex and Max um, architecture and the codecs they support uh, to, uh, to um, offload by, uh, by the encoder are uh, H.264, which is one of the oldest um, uh, codecs that can be offloaded to GPUs. Next one is H. 265, also known um, as HEVC. And the la latest addition um, uh, to it is the AV1 codec. We're looking at H264 and 265, especially 265 is a, a licensed codec, which means that every company that uh, wants to utilize the codec basically needs to pay for a license. And this is one of the great advantages of AV1. AV1 is open source which means that it, um, 
it, it shows or it, it gives you the same, maybe even better uh, graphical um, experience as H.265 uh, and HEVC. Um, but it, uh, it does that for free. So it's completely open source and AV1 uh, is being created by different type, types of companies or different companies. Uh, so, uh, for instance, um, YouTube is one of those uh, those companies that work uh, that that is working on it, as well as Intel, Nvidia. So, different types of companies are contributing to the success of AV1. And since it's open source, like m multiple companies, multiple developers can uh, work together to make it even a better codec. So, these codecs could be offloaded by um, the uh, or to the uh, to the encoder. Um, there are different types of other codecs that can be used as well, especially when we're looking at the uh, virtual machine. But those codecs, for instance, BLAST, the BLAST codec or the, the PNG uh, and JPEG codec, they cannot be offloaded to a GPU. So you need uh, to run them on CPU level, which quite honestly um, has a negative impact to, uh, to user experience. In order to utilize the hardware and uh, the, the accompanying, accompanying um, uh, APIs and codecs to a virtual machine. In this case, you need a virtual function. And the virtual function is created on hypervisor level between the actual um, GPU and the, uh, the virtual machine. So you create a virtual function. Let's use a different caller for that, a VF. And within that VF, you basically dis, def, uh, define um, what chunk of the GPU will be used. Could be a one gig based virtual function, maybe a four gig or even a six gig virtual function. So in this case, for instance, for general purpose uh, VDI usage with a little bit of Teams, a little bit of browser based applications, a one gig based virtual function would be enough. So one gig which also means that one twelfth of the number of cores will be assigned and you'll get a chunk of, uh, of encoders. But it goes, like, like I mentioned, it could also be six gigs for media editing or cat development or stuff like that. So you create such a virtual function, you assign it to the virtual machine and then the virtual machine could use it. How it would use those, um, those functions is based on the APIs. So we're looking at the, the type of workloads that run inside a virtual machine. We can also like distinct three types of workloads. You have the graphical workloads, computational workloads, and again, those, those workloads that utilize a codec. So let's call them codec workloads. Now, when looking at graphical types of applications, that could be a CAD-based app, so that's a full graphical app. Graph app. It could also be a specific function within an application. So if you take an EMR application, for instance, and the EMR app contains a specific function that, that calls uh, a graphical API, um, for instance, a Google Earth plugin. So you just have the, the EMR app, you open up Google Earth to pinpoint where a patient might be, uh, be, might be located, then that specific function uh, will utilize the graphical app. So you have a graphical function. Function. And last but not least, um, there's also graphical uh, functions inside the OS. So OS functions, rendering of the start menu, rendering of uh, a display manager in, um, uh, in Linux. All of those individual functions will utilize a GP, uh, um, an API and thus the, uh, the GPU to, uh, to run that. So these are like the commonly known types of functions or applications that would utilize a GPU. What's a little bit less common um, is the computational aspect. So you have computational apps and I think ML apps are the most commonly known to do so. We'll, talk, we'll dive into the world of, uh, of machine learning in the next video. Um, but next to that, compu full computational apps, you also have apps with a computational function. So uh, some apps like um, Office, for instance, they could utilize um, 
uh, the CPU for most of the things that you're doing, but for specific things, they might offload a specific calculation to, uh, to a GPU. Uh, and they do that utilizing those uh, individual um, uh, computational uh, APIs, so CUDA, OpenCL, or, or one API. Now the last one, and I think that's, uh, that's, there's a misconception around utilizing GPUs for VDI, um, and that's the OS. Again, OS functions that are offloaded to a GPU. So if you look at Windows, for instance, as an operating system, uh, Windows has a couple of services, like the indexing service, the search uh, application, that are by default offloaded to a GPU to basically speed up the process. So as soon as Windows detects a GPU, it will utilize that. And thus, will save you CPU resources that you could allocate to, uh, to different applications or other processes, if you will. Um, and yeah, that increases definitely the scalability on, uh, on a VDI platform. Now, and we're looking at uh, processes that, that leverage codecs. Um, the average, uh, the obvious one within the VDI is the BLAST protocol, uh, but couldn't be any remoting protocol that's, that supports uh, those, uh, those uh, codecs, if you will. Um, another one is like videos, online videos. Um, and in this case, if you, for instance, watch a YouTube video, the rendering of the video and the displaying of the video is being offloaded using graphical APIs. But the actual decoding of the video inside the virtual desktop is being offloaded to the GPU. So watching a video is offloaded in two different ways, which again, saves you a lot of CPU cycles. And last but, but, uh, but not least is like the, the Teams Zoom WebEx kind of uh, applications that also utilize a, uh, a codec to, uh, to basically display the stream, encode the stream uh, or decode the stream. So it will save you again, some CPU cycles there and offload it to, uh, to the GPU. Now, where the um, I think where the Intel Flex and Mac series GPUs really uh, really excel is, is a broad spectrum of different types of uh, of applications. Um, when looking at the TCO, they don't come with uh, licensing, for instance. So you basically buy the hardware and you can utilize it uh, in your platform. Horizon, starting with version uh, 2303, fully supports encoding uh, and rendering uh, utilizing the uh, the Intel. Um, architecture and um, scalability on those GPUs is uh, is pretty decent. So again, like running twelve different sessions with a VF uh, with a virtual function of one gig, perfectly works fine. And you can even have twelve of those sessions running two four uh, K monitors, utilizing hardware based encoding on the on the cards, and it works perfectly fine. So. And it will obviously depend on the type of applications, if one gigs or one gig, two gigs, three gigs, or six gigs would be uh, sufficient. Uh, but looking at general purpose VDI with a one gig frame buffer profile or a one gig frame buffer uh, virtual function um, is, uh, is highly scalable on the card. Now, what I'll, what I'll do in the next video is talk about a specific use case. So um, running these different types of graphical APIs, computational APIs and codecs into a single session. How can customers benefit from uh, the frameworks that can run on top of that? So uh, Intel developed the, the, the one API, but also a framework called OpenVINO, as well as their Intel Developer Cloud. In the next video, I'll, I'll, I'm going to cover how the workflow um, looks like when uh, integrating that into a uh, virtual desktop. For now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.